All right, so I was a little hesitant to make a video about this because as it stands, the progress that I have made uh, on this project here, this in-game compiler project, it hasn't really produced anything useful. There's no new features that has been added to this. In fact, we're even worse than that because what I have done is actually removed some features. So now uh, the, the demo that I have right now um, is actually less functional than the demo that I had in the, in the first vlog. Um, but I asked you guys if you wanted to, to see the update that I've made thus far. You guys said yes, so I'm going to kind of meet in the middle. We're just going to make this sort of a, a half vlog entry. So not entirely complete in that we're demonstrating new stuff. We're just kind of going over what I've done to kind of update the project. So I guess the first thing I should cover is what prompted this, and that is the fact that you know, the, the in-game compiler project, it's still something that holds some level of interest to me. I see it as sort of a useful tool that would allow me to really kind of gain an intuitive understanding of the idea of building languages and processing them, compiling them, turning them into assembly, and then executing them on some kind of a basic computer. I, I feel that that would be a, a cool thing to put together. I felt that it was a cool thing to put together when I first put together this project, um, and that is still the case. The only problem is when I first started that project, um, I was in the middle of another project already. So um, in my mind, I didn't really have time to work on both projects. So I put this one aside. Well, unfortunately, two things kind of happened. One is I put it aside for too long, which means I forgot how a lot of the stuff that I put together worked. Um, but the second thing that was kind of a problem is because everything was made with command blocks, which are, um, I mean, they work, but they're very, very difficult to wrap your head around, especially when you don't know what it is a lot of these things do. Um, it, it just made it very, very difficult for me to get caught back up on the project so that I could actually move forward with this. Combine that with the fact that newer versions of Minecraft have broken some of the features that I took advantage of to create things such as the cursor on the screen. And it was pretty obvious that this project needed some level of updating before I could move on. So I decided to start working on this project again. About a month ago, I started working on it. And my goal for the time that I was going to spend working on it was not necessarily to add anything new, but just to get the, the old stuff, the, the keyboard, the buffer, the screen, all of that updated to a new format that is, one, more stable, and two, easier to understand. And uh, while I'm not particularly fond of commands, Minecraft command system and, and MC functions, um, I can at least appreciate MC functions a little bit better because I can properly label and comment things, which makes it a lot easier to pick up the project later on. So that was the plan. Um, it was basically just to update everything into MC functions. Now, um, I was originally hesitant to do this because I know at the very least a lot of the command block structures that I had put together um, had a little bit of a, of a timing thing going on. A lot of these command blocks, what they would do is they would trigger other chains of command blocks by setting um, the auto data for those command blocks. And what that would do is that would cause them to execute one tick later. And so a lot of the systems that I had put together um, were dependent on that tick of delay. Now, I initially thought that replicating that with MC functions would be very, very difficult. But fortunately, I found out that Minecraft commands include something called a schedule command, which allows you to basically schedule a function to run at some you know, interval of time later. So that gave me a little bit of confidence to start uh, updating everything. Um, and as it turns out, I actually really didn't need to use it all that much. A lot of this stuff, um, because of how it's set up, can actually just all execute in one long chain of, of MC functions, usually in one tick. The only exception to that is when there's a loop. Um, in those situations, obviously because of the command limit, uh, you can't just run some command in an MC function you know, 70,000 times, you're going to have to break that up into loops that are going to execute over multiple ticks. So um, to address that, I use the schedule command to to take care of that. But otherwise, everything else was uh, actually a lot easier to put together. But of course, the other advantage to uh, using MC functions is that uh, because I can wrap my head around more complex ideas, um, I was actually able to implement some other features that I did not even consider when I first started this project. Um, and that was the idea or the, the feature of allowing the user to choose where each component is located. And that's kind of nice because, you know, in the, in the first video, in the first vlog that I did on this project, I was a little bit hesitant to, of where I placed the, the keyboard and screen relative to each other because I figured the angle was too sharp. It didn't quite line up quite right. I didn't quite like it. Um, so 
that was kind of a point of contention for me, but I just went with it anyway because I needed to move forward with the project. I needed to pick a location for these components so that I could plug those, uh, those locations, uh, those coordinates into the command blocks. Of course, now I've got a system where you can just place the, the components anywhere in any orientation. So now if I ever decide I want to move the location of the keyboard and screen, or even just some of the intermediary components like the buffer or future components like the, the tokenizer and things like that, I can do so without uh, too much hassle. Now, does that complicate the MC functions a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's not too terribly bad. The, the caret notation for coordinate systems, for the most part, makes it pretty easy. You just have to remember to orientate a lot of the armor stands and things in the correct orientation so that everything works, uh, works out correctly. Um, and of course, the other limitation is uh, volumes. Um, Minecraft will only work with a volume if uh, the first coordinate is lesser than the second coordinate. So if you're using those caret notations, um, those coordinates can sometimes be reversed. So you have to check for those conditions, but otherwise it's pretty simple. But anyway, as far as the keyboard and screen are concerned, I've actually got those back up to 100% functionality. The keyboard can spit out characters. Um, obviously you can press the keys, it'll scan the keyboard, determine what key's been pressed, and you can change the, the keyboard layout as well. I've managed to, to recreate that. And then as far as the screen is concerned, there's not too terribly much in terms of functionality for that sort of thing. All it's doing is just taking characters and pushing it to the screen, moving a cursor, and then if it receives a new line character, it just brings the cursor back to the beginning of the screen and then down one. Um, the only exception to that, of course, is, the, is building the, the cursor indicator. Not the screen cursor, this is the actual user's cursor. And for that, I, I actually use trap doors this time around, which um, works very, very well. Um, in fact, I'd actually say that this system was actually a lot better than the painting system. Um, the only issue, of course, is because trap doors are thicker than paintings, there's a bit of like a parallax effect with the cursors. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. And then the last component that I managed to sort of get updated, this is the only one that I didn't completely update, was the buffer. Now with the buffer, because I'm being a little bit more conscientious about the amount of space that each of these components take up, I've redesigned it such that the footprint is a lot smaller. And the only reason why I did that is just because eventually, like I said, more components are going to be added to this world. Making the footprint as small as possible just makes it easier to squeeze everything into the same area. But I managed to get um, the basic functionalities back in there. We can insert a, a character or we can replace a character. Um, we can delete or backspace those uh, both those work. Um, and then we have the ability to move the cursor left and right. That all is working just fine. Um, I do have some vertical uh, cursor movement. The only one that's working right now, though, is cursor move down. Um, cursor move down works pretty reliably and pretty consistently. Um, it's just cursor move up. That one is a little bit of, a, of, a, of an issue. It does work most of the time, but there are certain uh, situations where it can get the wrong index um, for the cursor. And uh, that's something that I'd like to try and work on resolving. Unfortunately, I think there's an issue that I would need to resolve first, and that is the ability to properly uh, calculate the horizontal index. Now, what do I mean by the horizontal index? It's not really something I want to get into right now because it's a, it's a system that I might not even keep. Um, but it's basically just a way of keeping track of what the horizontal index of the cursor would be if these characters were printed onto the screen. Um, otherwise, the buffer does not have any of its original uh, behavior, none of the selections um, or the cursor movement. At this point, it doesn't even have the ability to push things onto the screen. Those are all things that I've yet to add. So um, there's still some work that needs to be done in order to actually get this project back to where it was when it <laughs> when I last left it off in the first vlog. Um, that's going to take some time, but once I get to that point, it should be a lot easier to start adding some of the more complex components, such as the tokenizer, the parser, or the abstract syntax tree traverser. But yeah, this is a short video. Uh, I realize that, but like I said, this is a half vlog, so I'm just kind of giving you a, a quick update as to what has been done and what still needs to be done. So as far as when I'm going to work on this project again, not entirely certain, but at this point, because everything's in MC functions, I at least feel confident that if I do decide to pick it up again at a much later date, I shouldn't have to sit here and struggle to figure out how everything works again. I should be able to just pick it up and move on. So yeah, that's about all I got. 
Now, I know that this is a short video and it may seem weird that I'm going to be bringing this plug in, but even still, I still want to thank the people who chose to support me on Patreon. Um, I know that at this point, my Patreon size isn't too terribly great, but even still, the support that they show, the support that you guys show, it's really encouraging and I do appreciate it. So just as, at the very least, just to show my thanks, I want to take some time to just say thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to do so. The link will be in the description. You can join for as little as a dollar. Uh, members of my Patreon, they get access to the feed where I post weekly uh, project updates there, as well as, you know, some tutorials here and there when I've got some time to make one. And if you're a little bit hesitant as to whether or not some of this stuff is worth it, obviously, as my Patreon grows, I can offer better uh, rewards for people who choose to support me. But you can join for as little as a dollar. Feel free to just sign up and take a look around. Um, and if you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. You can cancel it. You basically get to see what I have to offer for the cost of a dollar. Again, thank you for your consideration. And again, thank you to my patrons for choosing to support me. And I will see you all in the next video.